In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventus tui, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Amen. So today in the Universal Calendar is the Feast of St. Gertrude the Great, uh, but for since, uh, dear sisters, the Benedictines, uh, that's tomorrow superseding uh, St. Gregory Thaumaturgus, who is also tomorrow, we'll speak about him today. Uh, and he was uh, one of the early, early figures of the church, uh, born in the year 217 or thereabouts, uh, and lived to the year 270. And he was uh, started out as a pagan. His parents uh, were pagan, he was a pagan. I mean, he had an excellent education, uh, excellent education in um, the antiquity, right? The best the Greek, the Roman uh, cultures had to offer. However, he found that this was not enough, right? Only Christ has, uh, you know, Christ himself. I am the way and the truth and the life. Anybody who seeks after the truth seeks after Christ. And this was uh, St. Gregory as a young man. And so we did find that uh, only the Christian church had uh, true answers, right? The, the, the answers to his hard questions. And so he sought that out and indeed uh, became uh, Catholic, became baptized. And he was baptized by Origen. Remember that, that father of the church, Origen of Alexandria, who was, uh, he was taught by him, uh, baptized, entered into the church uh, through Origen, who himself would never be declared a saint because of his uh, certain um, erroneous beliefs, which hadn't been defined yet. Uh, but Gregory Thaumaturgus uh, ended up uh, in Alexandria disputing with the scholars, the, the pagan scholars of the day, who uh, were unable to refute him. I think they couldn't um, have that, that, the debate. He always beat them in a debate. And it wasn't just his arguments were better. Uh, his example was better. Right? What he had learned from the faith, his, his, just his very being, his, his virtues, his sanctity, and so on. And so, uh, you know, as, as the world is wont to do, uh, they will resort to any means to get their way. And so they hired a prostitute to accuse him uh, publicly. Uh, but while she was in the midst of leveling her accusations, uh, the demon possessing her actually manifested himself and she fell down into a, 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 a possession. But Gregory, uh, St. Gregory prayed over her and the demon left her. So that was one of his first uh, public miracles. But eventually he would leave behind uh, scholarship, academics, and so on. Uh, he wanted to give his life more fully to Christ. And so he lived as a hermit. I uh, went into the desert where he practiced austerities, penances, uh, giving his life fully to God. Uh, but the local bishop... Uh, heard of his uh, eminent sanctity and wanted him to become uh, another bishop uh, in uh, Neo Caesarea. So th this is the archbishop wanting him to take over one of those cities who, who needed a bishop. Uh, Gregory Thaumaturgus refused, however. He would not leave his hermitage uh, even for ordination as, as a priest and a bishop to go take this city. So the archbishop decides um, he's going to ordain him anyways and holds an ordination ceremony without Gregory actually being there. And the bishop begged God to accept this ordination. And so when Gregory Thaumaturgus heard of this, he, he took that as a sign from God, okay, maybe I am supposed to be bishop, uh, so he accepted. So uh, uh, Gregory Thaumaturgus uh, goes to the city of Neo Caesarea, and at that time it was a city of thousands, thousands and thousands of people, and uh, I don't know how we get this number. They said there were 17 Catholics in the city, 17 out of thousands. So he had quite a bit of work to do, uh, but he was well equipped, right? God orders all things sweetly and he never, um, nothing is ever superfluous for God. Right? He always gives people what they need to accomplish uh, the task he has for them. And so Gregory was well equipped with his rhetoric, with his knowledge, with his scholarship. Uh, and so we set about uh, the hard work of converting his city. Uh, which he did by his, uh, his efforts, certainly, uh, but more so by his prayers, uh, by his good example, uh, and by just his own, his own personal uh, way of life. Uh, now, he's called Thaumaturgus for a reason. That means wonder worker. And so among them uh, is that two, two, two prominent men in the city were arguing over an inheritance. And the, the argument was there was a lake in the middle of their properties, which uh, they had divided. Uh, but who got the lake? because it was, it was on both. And so they were arguing about who, who would get the uh, um, uh, control, possession of, of the lake itself. So St. Gregory prays all night and uh, for a solution. And the next morning, 
the entire lake had uh, shrunk down to a river, which exactly split the two properties. And so uh, there, there that um, uh, dispute was resolved. Another time, uh, there was a church that needed to be built, uh, but the only place for it was this inconvenient hill that was all rocky and, and, and um, um, uh, not, not really suited for that purpose. So St. Gregory um, moves the hill by his prayers. It actually it just, it, it, it's not there anymore. It moves somewhere else. So that was uh, literally what scripture says, say to this mountain, be uprooted and planted in the sea. Uh, he obviously believed that and uh, God gave him that miracle. Uh, there was another time uh, he was, and this is, again, this is the year 217, so now, you know, maybe 250 or 60 or so. Uh, Catholicism is not accepted in the Roman Empire, right? It is still, um, you know, tolerated at best and persecuted at other times. And so uh, St. Gregory lived through that. He lived through a period of persecution and at one point had to flee and hide. And uh, while in hiding, his um, location was disclosed by a traitorous person. And so uh, he had to f um, flee again for his life and, and they were caught in the middle of an open field. He was he and one companion. And so he stops and simply raises his arm uh, to heaven and prays. And the men come through the field and they're, they're walking around him and his companion and nothing happens. And then the men go back and the report they gave later was uh, they could find no sign of him. Uh, all they found was an empty field with two trees standing in the middle. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this, you know, there's many more, many more stories of Gregory Thaumaturgius, but by the time of his death, uh, he asked, he's on his deathbed, and he asks how many in the city are not Catholic, right? His city of Neo Caesarea. And they say in the whole city, there are only 17 who are not converted to the faith yet. So he completely had inverted that number uh, by, his, by his life and example. Uh, so um, that is an example, right? That, that is what the saints can do with the grace of God uh, when we simply respond to the talents that he gives us. I, our, our whole life is, is just a series of opportunities of God giving us something and then us giving it back, right? God gave to Gregory Thaumaturgius uh, a, a, the intelligence, right? The gift of the ability to learn. And so he learned, right? He, he went to school, he applied himself, he learned that, that secular uh, knowledge. And then God gave him another grace, the conversion to the faith. Uh, Gregory responded, right? He converted, he gave his knowledge to God, and then now God gave him an opportunity, right? Uh, become bishop of the city. Now use your secular knowledge and skill and your faith uh, to convert others. And so St. Gregory does. And, and so that, that, is, that is what our lives are, right? We, it, it's a continual process of just giving back, right? Giving back to God what he's given us in the first place. And, and everybody gains, right? Everybody always gains when we give to Christ, um, uh, even we ourselves, right? And, and you know, I, I know it's happened to me personally. I'm sure it's happened to you as well. It's like, you pray, I, like I need somebody, I, I need something to happen. And then somebody comes along and they're happy to give exactly what you need. And you thank them and they say, don't thank me. I've been praying for somebody to give this to. Right? That, that, that's how God loves to work. That's how he loves to do it. Um, and, and so it's just, it's, it, we can see it's been happening since the beginning of the church. It's like that is how, that is God's very nature is generosity. All we have to do is look at the cross. God gave us everything he has. And then uh, he asks us to do the same in return. Not that he's taking anything, just like nobody took his life. But in asking us to give, he's asking us to be happy, right? It is in giving away that we're going to find our true happiness, giving our life, our time, our talents, and so on. And at the end, we like, God, what? You, you've given me everything. Giving it back to you has fulfilled me completely. And so what an example uh, we have from Gregory Thaumaturgius uh, and on all those who give their lives generously to Christ. Uh, so let's pray for um, uh, that, that faith, that love, and that uh, ability uh, to give generously when God asks, to give back generously. St. Gregory Thaumaturgius, pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.